All right, so we have put our vector file, kept it as a smart object, that's incredibly important, saved it in PhotoP as a PSD file, and then I turned off the background, the white background, and I saved it as a PNG. That can go to Canvas. It could also be a JPEG and go to Canvas, as long as it's made from a vector. And so now I can add to my refined sketch my next step in the project. There are three steps. Your refined sketch, your black logo, and then your color logo. It takes a lot of time, patience, and effort to get a good black logo solution. But once you have it, it's incredibly easy to make color variations. So I'm going to call this my black vector logo now. And I just bring in my PNG, drag and drop it in. Remember that Canvas online sites can support JPEGs, they can support PNGs, and they can support GIFs. They can't support any kind of vector format. So we had to, to bring it into a program that rasterized it for us. But we did it in such a way that it's infinitely scalable within that raster program. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide how I want to print it. So if this is the mat, and this is the 8x10 opening in the mat, if I print it, it's going to look like this. And if I like that, great. I just want to make sure it's at least 300 pixels per inch at 8x10 inches. So I go to image size. It's 8x10 by 350. If I want to change it, right, I can change not the image size, but the canvas size to 8 inches by 10 inches. That's the difference between portrait format and landscape format, right? And I can place it within there. Give yourself a lot of white space at the edge because though the mats say they're 8 by 10 inches and that's what we're going to print, that opening is actually 7.5 by 9.5 inches. They give a quarter inch overlap on each side. Now, once it's ready and placed and at the right resolution, you are now going to save it or export it. You have to go to export as and then to more. This is specialized stuff as what's called an archive format. And this is going to be a TIFF, which is sometimes TIF or sometimes TIFF as it is here. So we're going to save it as a TIFF, but we're going to change its name. So this is different than your PSD. We're just going to change its name by putting a capital P and a capital R in front of your name. That stands for print ready. And then we're going to hit save. Now this is what's awesome. It's kind of nerdy and computer science-y, but it's awesome. So the reason TIFFs are so great Think of TIFFs as being a transferable image format. I'm not sure what TIFF actually stands for, but that's a good thing to think it stands for. Transfer, transferable image for, format. Because it can be opened between programs. So I can open it in preview. There it is. I can open it in Photoshop. And I can open it on any kind of image viewer that's not a website. right? But here's what's beautiful about it. If I open it in Photoshop, and then I save it, save it as a TIFF, this will just show you kind of the, the insides of it, it gives me these options. So TIFF comes with these options. And the option you always want for TIFFs, and this is on your midterm, is LZW. So TIFFs are not naturally a compression format. They save every bit of data, but they can support a specialized kind of image compression format called LZW. LZW is the only existing lossless form of image compression, which means that if you use LZW, it will make your image memory smaller without losing any data or hurting your image in any way. It just takes a little bit longer to save and a little bit longer to open. It's like folding a beautiful satin sheet into intricate origami. 
to fit it into something that you wouldn't otherwise be able to fit it into. LZW. So we always use LZW with, with TIFFs. And then we always flatten the TIFFs as well, just to save memory. All right. So now that we have a flattened TIFF file that's print ready, I'm going to mark that as purple. I mark my print ready files as purple. And that doesn't go to Canvas. Instead, that goes to something you'll find under the links of our page, of our homepage, which is dropbox.com. This is where we keep our cloud files for the class. So in dropbox.com, you're going to see a folder that says digital art class files. You're going to click on that. Double click on it. Then you're going to see a folder that says flatten TIFF files to print, because that's exactly what should go in there. Flatten TIFF files to print. Click on that. Within that, you're going to see a folder with your name. And you're going to be under FA23-2, because you're my second section this fall semester of 2023. You find your folder, you double click on that. Once you're in the folder, it's going to start out empty. You bring your purple print ready files into there. And once they're there, I can access them on our print computers and I can print them with you. And we start that next class. So what other projects do I want to make print ready? Because next class, we're going to open up your, your file in PhotoP and then all we're going to do to add color is we're going to make a duplicate of the layer with command J. It's going to be a, a duplicate of your vector smart object. And then we're going to double click on the layer. And then we're going to play with color overlay. Let's uh, pick what color do we want. Let's try red. Woo! At different opacities. Gradient overlay. What kind of gradient do we want? Sure. Put yellow. Let's do a warmer yellow. Right? And now it's mixing the yellow with the red. Now it's black again because I didn't hit OK. It's annoying. But we'll play with this next class, beginning of next class. And you can play with how these relate to each other. Right? I can give it a drop shadow. And I can play with the depth of that drop shadow, the angle of it, the distance. And these are all outputted from my clean vector. I can try this 3D thing, which is its bevel and emboss, which gives you like a highlight and a shadow. I don't know if I like it. It's kind of cool. What do you think, guys? The 3D effect. So we'll be playing with all of those. Yeah, what's great about layer styles, remember these are put onto our vector, our smart object, and they can be programmed on and off, right? So I can take off the 3D effect. I can take off the drop shadow. I can take off the color overlay and just leave that yellow gradient. And because this is all going onto the vector, it's all perfect vector quality. So that's what's, what's really nice about getting a good black shape vector, is we can do these versions. Now, what if you wanted to color different parts differently? That's what we'll talk about Monday's class, right? All right. They are next class starting about 1 o'clock. No, 2 o'clock. Yes. All of them are next class. We're fo following the course outline. Print presentation is a week from now, but we are printing next class. So presentations are next class, and we want to make stuff ready for printing. And our logos are due next class. Follow the course outline. Because next week is our midterm. Yeah. Go to dropbox.com. You're going to have to log in. How do you log in? I don't put this on the YouTube channel. You go to our Canvas page. Go to the home page, and then go to links. Okay. 
and then scroll down to the user dropbox. Right, so it's, that's our username, that's our password. Now, if it's the first time this computer is logging in, because it's a new operating system, it's going to give me a code to my Fox account, and I'll give you that code. So let me know if it needs that. So it's going to be out of photo key. And then more. And then it's going to, and you're going to change its name by putting capital P R at the front. Just print red. And then save. And then that's what you're going to put into your Dropbox folder. I didn't have to change it up here. Like if you just it looks like, I mean, it's pretty good. It'd be, it'd be nice if it was flattened, but it will work. Right? I'm just saying, like, the very best way to do it is to flatten it. But you've just got. Because I can do that all before I enter. Great. Yeah, so it's in your folder. Oh, you're in it. Great. So you're going to be in it. Okay. So now you're going to look for your folder. Yep, this is it. You're in it. And then you're ready for printing. So on Monday, you can use math, you can use paper, or you have science from the lab. Yes. Yes. Making it print ready? Yep. That's going to be our last video from today.